Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Boeing's Australian unmanned aircraft completes first taxi. Also, Dufour demonstrates EVTOL flight transitions. And NASA's OSIRIS-REx collects significant amount of asteroids. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode today, so let's start with the Boeing Loyal Wingman aircraft being developed with the Royal Australian Air Force recently moved under its own power for the first time. RAAF Head of the Air Force Capability, Air Vice Marshal Kath Roberts said, Air Force partner with industries to ensure that we can find innovative solutions to meet our future priorities. Boeing's Loyal Wingman project is a perfect example of what this collaborative approach can achieve. Seeing this prototype taped to the runway for the slow speed taxi test is an exciting moment, another significant development milestone ahead of its first flight. Reaching a maximum speed of 40 knots or about 16 miles per hour on the ground, the aircraft demonstrated several activities while maneuvering and stopping on command. Three loyal women prototypes will be the foundation for the air power teaming system that Boeing will offer customers worldwide. The aircraft will fly alongside other platforms, using artificial intelligence for such teaming missions. It has advanced design and flight characteristics, including a modular nose section that's customizable for specific needs. Coming up, the 2020 Multi-GP changes venue. I'll explain why after the break. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit flyskyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Introducing the new ELT-345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. So let's start with MultiGP had the venue for their upcoming championships sold out from under them. MultiGP's Chris Thomas noted that we are saddened to announce the venue for the 2020 MultiGP championship has been changed to Valkyria Airport in Palm Bay, Florida. MultiGP was extremely disappointed to find out that Daytona Stadium recently changed management, which voided our agreement. With over two weeks to go before the championship, it was not possible for us to secure another stadium for the event. Fortunately, we do have permission to use an alternate location in nearby Palm Bay. Honeywell partners with Pipistrol. Pipistrol has selected the Honeywell's fly-by-wire system for the Nuva V300 cargo UAV. Highly capable system with a proven architecture ideally suited for their autonomous cargo UAV. This product is intended for smaller autonomous cargo and urban air mobility vehicles and adds stability and performance by driving flight controls electrically without heavy hydraulics, control cables, or push rods. AMA leads FAA Drone Advisory Committee subgroup. In February 2020, the FAA asked the Drone Advisory Committee for ways to help the drone community to fully adopt the safety culture that is ingrained in manned aviation. In response, the DAC formed four subgroups to provide recommendations for manned operations, recreational UAS operators, small commercial UAS operators, and large commercial UAS operators. 
AMA led the Recreation UAS Operations Subgroup along with the ALPA, AOPA, DJI, Global Drone Academy, and FPV Freedom Coalition. UAVionics files FAA TSO application for certified drone transponder. UAVionics Corporation has filed a technical standard order application with the FAA Certification Office for its flagship mode SADS B out transponder for UAS. The Ping 200X follows a line of groundbreaking low size, weight, and Power Avionics developed and certified by UAVionics for UAS General Aviation Aircraft. That was our Unmanned Minute. After these messages, we have details about the OSIRIS-REx mission you don't want to miss. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo Power Plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. Do4 demonstrates eVTOL flight transitions. This summer, Do4 reports that it completed its first phase of flight testing for their eVTOL demonstrator with 550 flight tests. They were able to show a high degree of stability and control in all conditions, including transitions from hover to cruise and back again. Demonstrator was designed as a research platform to prove their understanding of the flight dynamics and develop their control laws for large side tilt wing aircraft. It has helped them build the technology for Aero 3 their upcoming unmanned tilt-wing aircraft for medical transport and regional air mobility. As a research platform, it has not been optimized for noise emissions. Nonetheless, they think it's interesting to hear the character of the noise it produces. And they are sharing some footage for a full transition flight with audio to show their progress as of summer 2020. Note that this is an onboard recording from directly below the props. And even so, it's significantly less noisy than a helicopter. NASA's OSIRIS-REx collects significant amount of asteroid. It may be the year's ultimate unmanned mission. After touching down on asteroid Bennu, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission team received images that confirm the spacecraft has collected more than enough material to meet one of its main mission requirements, acquiring at least two ounces or 60 grams of asteroid surface material, if they can keep it all. The spacecraft captured images of the sample collector head as it moved through several different positions. In reviewing these images, the OSIRIS-REx team noticed that both the head appeared to be full of asteroid particles and that some of these particles appeared to be escaping slowly from the sample collector, called the touch-and-go sample acquisition mechanism head. They suspect bits of material are passing through small gaps where the mylar flap, the collector's lid, is slightly wedged open by larger rocks. The team believes it has collected sufficient samples and is on the path to stow the samples as quickly as possible. The images also show that any movement to the spacecraft and the TAGSAM instrument may lead to further sample loss. To preserve the remaining material, the mission team canceled a breaking burn schedule for Friday to minimize any acceleration to the spacecraft. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Thank you for joining us. Now, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Remember, the Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday and Friday with Airborne Unmanned, alternating with Airborne Flight Training each Wednesday. We hope you enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.